few weeks ago I built a pencil sharpener using a turbine. I did not expect anybody to take my abilities to sharpen pencils seriously, but here we are. Now I have a bunch of people asking me to do it the right way. So here we go. Really all I did was add a second nozzle and flow test some things really quick. Well, so there you go. That should probably do it for this video. Hey, Let me... isn't there a bunch of minutes left in this video? And? So you can't just stand here and do nothing. You actually have to actually say something to camera. Also, people hate fourth wall breaks right in the middle of their thing. Hold on, you can't just commentate on other people's videos. Well, what even am I supposed you're to do? Technically just come the up with something editing. right off the top hey, of my no. head? I mean, I can't. All right, fine. Let's make a levitating turbine. So obviously in the scientific community, we understand magnets to be complete magic and have real no understanding of how they actually work. They just kind of exist floating out in space and some things are magnetic, some things are not. That's not true, but it's a whole lot easier to explain than how magnets actually work. What matters to us today is that a magnet has two poles and the north pole of a magnet always wants to be next to the south pole of another magnet. The other easiest way to explain this is the 1989 romantic comedy When Harry Met Sally. The North Poles facing each other is like at the beginning of the movie, they hate each other, and by the end of the movie, if you flip the poles, they want to be close. So if we stick these circular magnets on the top of other circular magnets with similar poles, it'll just float and then hypothetically, because there's no friction, it'll spin forever, right? The problem is that there is still friction with air resistance of the flywheel spinning, especially in our case, more on that later, but even the smoothest flywheel in the world still will stop spinning at some point. The other problem is, is that there are magnetic eddy currents to where there is some magnetic resistance, even though it's free spinning, it's not touching, those magnetic fields still create a resistance, same as a boat traveling through water. It's not a complete foregone conclusion because if you're NASA and you have access to millions of dollars and an entire research and development team of rocket scientists, yes, the backup generators or the backup batteries, I guess you could say, at NASA are, are mechanical batteries, which is a very, very cool thing. There are a lot of pieces parts here and a lot of pieces parts that like to stick to each other here. So I'm going to start with the flywheel, I think. Um, speaking of, this is our flywheel. Um, some of you may notice that it is a uh, timing wheel slash flex plate off of, uh, well, this one is off of an S600, actually that V12 from the S600. Um, it also fits pretty much anything else that's Chrysler or Mercedes from that era. Um, but technically it's a V12 flywheel flex plate. So uh, this was the round thing that I had laying around the shop. Now, some of you may notice that in the assembly I had these M10s. And then after having M10s that are made out of steel flying around with magnets, uh, they were causing problems. So I upgraded, <laughs> kind of to these Ace Hardware Nylon 3 8 bolts, which kind of fit in a 10 millimeter hole. That's just kind of where we're at right now. I actually experimented around a lot with uh, which magnets to use and where. Um, I'd, I think I used too many magnets, but I'd rather use too many magnets than not enough magnets. But I mean, I don't know, we'll see. All right, uh, next is these little carrier critters. They have their own little stack of magnets. And then they have a slotted piece in the back here for adjustability. So I can adjust the magnets in and out and kind of give uh, a little bit, so I can center it in the assembly a little bit easier because it has to line up with the other magnet. Now I get to grab the metal bracket. I don't think this is gonna last if I set this over here. No, it will not. So. Like an American auto manufacturer in the 90s, this has a pretty good mixture of both SAE and metric parts. Um, I'm not proud of that. 
And now it's time for everybody's favorite game show. Wesley is surprised that magnets work the way they are supposed to work. Come on. Stop it. A suspended flywheel that really only has this tiny little point of contact. Right like that? Cool. So we got these pressed in here. They are eight magnets. Uh, well, actually four times eight because they're stacked a little bit in there and these sit in the middle of there. So let's uh, assemble the turbine now. One of the changes I made is I split the impellers into two separate, two separate pieces. It just makes life a little bit easier. And I'm using uh, ER70-2, just 16th inch TIG rod, uh, as just kind of driver pins to hold a lot of these little pieces together, so. It does spin, but we have a balance issue, so. Let me fix that. And as that moves back and forth, it should kind of engage that clutch a little bit. And everything, everything will work great. Everything always works perfect with no modifications whatsoever. So, all right, I have the vibration fixed. I also kind of abandoned the idea of that magnetic clutch because it was kind of a terrible idea to begin with. Other than that, uh, this should work pretty well as just a low speed little deal. I could have designed the spacing on these magnets a little bit better. Uh, these little magnets just don't quite have the force I'd, I'd like. Uh, they smooth out a lot when they're at speed, but I'm also putting on safety glasses because if a five pound flywheel comes flying off, safety glasses will save me, I'm very sure of it. Okay. So yeah, there we go. I'm probably gonna do a magnetic gear set for this because that's the next logical step. And I wanna kind of incorporate the clutch into that as well because the entire goal of this is that I can energize the flywheel uh, and get it spun up and then pull it off and it can spin down and be a mechanical battery. Well, I think that's sort of a success. We built a levitating flywheel that works great. We built a levitating turbine that works okay. Uh, we built a way to connect the two very bad. So that's the next step, I guess. Um, I feel like a lot of people are going to ask me why I built this because it's been done. There's nothing new here. Um, anyways, <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment below. And thank you guys very much for watching. Well, uh, hold, hold, hold on here. You can't commentate. <laughs> Slam a mic pack into a mirror.